Benjamin for beginners. Proper development. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Benjamin for Beginners, a series of videos designed for players starting out, particularly children. Uh, so far, we've covered some of the basic checkmates, both uh, in the endgame, queen and the rook, and also the, the uh, four-move checkmate that we don't want to have happen to us. But now we're going to move on to basic strategy in the opening. Now, occasionally you hear coaches talking about the opening isn't that important or that they don't like to teach much about the opening. They really mean is you don't need to memorize a whole lot of moves. Uh, in fact, memorizing moves can uh, lead you to playing alone, just doing your own thing and not responding to what your opponent is trying to do. But what you have to do in the opening is you have to play according to opening principles. You have to play sensible moves. And there is basically a right way and a wrong way to get your pieces into the game. And so today's lesson is going to be about proper development in the opening. Now, it's good to start the, the game by um, e4 or a pawn to d4 is also good. Uh, just taking a stake in the center and opening things up for your bishop and your queen. Um, my colleague Sophia Rode likes to call it opening the front doors, and that's a very nice term for kids. Open the front doors, and you don't need to do very much more with pawns in the, in the opening. Um, as you become a more advanced player, I'll talk about a little bit in this game, that the, um, the C pawns can often help uh, control the center. But you don't want to make too many pawn moves. You, your pawn moves in the opening, they want to really have a purpose. Now here black plays e5. This is just a sample game I made up, actually. e5 with the same idea of controlling the center and getting pieces out. Now, one mistake a lot of uh, kids make is to run out with the queen. And even though it can work if black falls asleep, at the wheel. Um, if black is uh, is on the ball, bringing that queen out is just going to get chased around. And we saw a little bit of that in last week's lesson. So you don't really want the queen. And your rooks, well, look at them. They're not about to come out. Don't, don't try to bring them up like this, because very often when you bring them up, you just get them taken off by the bishop. OK, so your key pieces early in the game are your knights and your bishops. And these are the first pieces you want to develop. Just a couple of pawn moves in the center and knights and bishops. And here, white develops with a little bit of a threat. Knight f3 attacks the pawn on e5. Black defends with knight c6. And in this particular game, white is going to play knight to c3. White can also make good moves with bishop b5. It's called the Roy Lopez idea of pressuring the e5 pawn, of possibly taking the knight, which is defending e5, or bishop to c4, which is pointed f7. That's the weak point in black's position, and that's uh, that's something we'll look at in future lessons. But today we're just developing the knight, knight c3, knight to f6, bishop to c4 bishop to c5. These are just examples of players putting their pieces on good squares. d3. Now, it's great if you can play e4 and d4, if you can get both pawns in the fourth rank, but usually your opponent isn't going to let you. So here, white plays d3 to open up the bishop on c1. But notice that first, white has developed the other bishop, so that doesn't get blocked in. I see that mistake a lot. Pawn comes to d3 when the bishop is still back on f1 and doesn't get to come out as actively as it can. Some, something to be aware of in the opening. Black plays the same. And in fact, we see that uh, both players are playing the same moves here because they're sensible moves. 
Um, it's a little bit of a copycat game, you could call it. And uh, uh, in the um, in the next lesson, we're going to see how that can backfire if you're doing that without really thinking about your moves. But here, black is playing these moves not because they're the same as whites, but because they're sensible moves as well. And here, white plays bishop g5. This is uh, one of the good things you can do with your bishop in the opening. It's pin on the knight. And what pin, a pin means is that a piece either cannot move at all because it's pinned to the king, that's called an absolute pin, or a relative pin like this where knight is pinned against the queen, it means that if the knight moves, very bad things happen. White gets the queen. And I've seen that happen too often among kids, certainly. Um, you just uh, forget what's going on there. But you have to be aware of pins. And here, black is dealing with that pin right away with h6, putting the question to the bishop, does the bishop take or does the bishop retreat? Well, very often it's a good idea to retreat and maintain a pin. Uh, in this case, if white plays bishop h4, black might break that pin eventually, maybe play bishop g4, counterpinning himself. And later on, this g5 could drive the bishop to g3, where it will be really kind of out of play for a while. So there is sometimes that risk that your bishop can end up somewhere where it's not very active. In our game today, we're just going to take that knight and see where this, this leads. Here, black takes with the queen. Don't be afraid to make this move because you've been told not to bring your queen out in the opening. Yes, you don't want to run around too early with your queen, but black has brought out a lot of pieces. Uh, he's not using the queen too early. And also, the queen is coming out to make a capture. It's not really losing any time. However, after white's next move, knight d5, black has to be a little bit careful with that queen. Now, first of all, this move, knight d5, it's moving the knight for a second time in the opening. Now, that's something you want to avoid. Uh, you don't want to move pieces, move the same piece a lot in the opening until you've used your other pieces. And that's very important. Don't come out and just play with one or two or three pieces. Try to use all of your pieces. And you're going to see that in this game, both sides use all of their pieces. Here, the knight is moving for a second time, but white has used most of his pieces already, so it's a good time to start thinking about where the pieces can really move to do something good. Here, the knight attacks the queen. So black can uh, play uh, queen g6 here and be aggressive with his queen uh, and go for some counter threats, but he has to be aware that white will take the pawn on c7, so that would be a bit of a gamble. Sometimes it's a good idea just to hold on to all your pieces in the opening, and uh, I know that a lot of kids uh, don't worry about those pawns, but those pawns can become queens later on, so they do matter. So here, in our game, black is just bringing the queen back to d8, uh, because black is not really worried about bringing that queen out just yet. It will get into the game later. And now in our game, white plays c3. Now, I told you that you don't need to make a lot of pawn moves in the opening. But here, white has developed all the minor pieces. And don't forget that bishop, which was traded, and castled. Those are kind of uh, your special moves that you really need to get in the opening. You need to get out both knights, both bishops, and castle. And almost every good opening is going to go according to that plan. And then after that, there's a lot of things you can do. Here, white is using the c-pawn to try to help out in the uh, center. The c-pawn is often called a semi-center pawn or kind of like half a center pawn because it can help out. And here, white wants to play d4, advance in the center. So that's a strategy that good players often use. They use these uh, C pawns, sometimes even the F pawn, but you want to be very, very careful about moving this pawn too early before castling because sometimes you can have trouble castling if you move 
those pawns. I usually tell my more beginning students to pretend that that F pawn is has glue on it and you cannot move in the opening. Um, as you get to advanced chess, you see that it's not always that way, but starting out, it's probably a very good rule. So after C3, black in turn plays a pawn move, and but this again, this pawn move has a purpose because after white's d4, black is has created a square to retreat to on a7. Now the black bishop b4 could go to b6, but white would be able to trade knight for bishop. Uh, in general, it's better to have bishops than knights, especially what we call the bishop pair, the two bishops. Here, black has the bishop pair. White has given that away, but while doing it, white gains a little time. So that was pretty much a fair trade that we saw with that bishop for the knight. Now, again, we see a pawn move for white, h3. Now, we're starting to see them in the middle game, and they make more sense that, then. A lot of young players play this move to make air for the king so they don't get checkmated on the back rank. This is something you really don't have to worry about too much in the opening. It's still a long way from a problem white has both rooked on the board. However, this move has another use of preventing a pin. And in this case, it's a good idea to prevent that pin because if black did get that bishop to g4, let's say white plays rook to e1 and the bishop comes to g4, now black is threatening to take on d4 or threatening to take the knight first and win a pawn. So white is protecting his center by playing the move h3. Now note that if black got one more attacker, he'd be in business. But for right now, d4 is safe. You need to be able to take something uh, successfully. You need to have one more attacker than there is defender. Black has three attackers. White has one, two, three defenders of, of the d4 pawn. So let's look at that. If black takes on d4 and takes again, white comes out winning a piece. So the basic principle is if you have one more one more attacker than defender, you can safely uh, take something. You can win material. It isn't always that way because if a queen is one of the defenders, uh, that can change things. You have to be sure about not just the number of pieces attacking and defending, but the quality how strong those pieces are. But for now, the basic rule that you need more attackers than defenders. And actually, black is not in a hurry to start with this exchange. That's kind of called giving up the center. And the reason is because if you back up one move, black's e pawn is better than white's c pawn. It's a center pawn. It's more advanced. If black takes, White now has two pawns in the center, and black has none. So you usually don't want to make that exchange unless you have a real good follow-up. So after white's h3, black develops another piece, bishop to e6, rook to e1. Now, after all the minor pieces come out, that's the time for the rooks. Both sides have castled. That's the best way to develop your rooks to get them prepared to come into the game. And then usually they'll want to come to the center files. They may go to other files if they're opened up. They usually like open files. That means files without pawns on them. But if the center is closed, they, they can kind of wait for the center to be opened. Here the rook is also defending this e4 pawn if it should ever be attacked. And black plays the same move, rook e8. And now comes the queen. Now that all the other pieces are in the game, it makes sense to bring the queen into the game. White is uh, not looking for that uh, quick knockout with that queen. He's just getting it into play. And black plays the same move, queen d7. And we're going to conclude our game with rook a d1 and rook ad8.
and both sides have now brought every piece into the game. So we could call the opening phase over now, and we are starting now into the middle game. Now let's just evaluate a little bit. Well, white has a little bit more going in the center, is, is occupying the center a little bit better, but black has, as I mentioned, the bishop pair, which is a little bit of an advantage. So we can call this position uh, pretty much equal. And this is actually just a game that I made up. It's not a famous game or anything. And I uh, just made up these moves because I wanted to give an example of, of, a, of a, a game, a part of a game where both sides get all of their pieces into the game and aren't really running around and worried about winning the game right away. I think for a young player, that's one of the best lessons you can learn is that you do not need to win the game in the first five moves or the first 10 moves. The early part of the game is where you set yourself up for winning in the middle game. You get your pieces into position where they will be able to do things later on. And that is really the best advice I can give about the opening phase. So now you have a pretty good idea of how to get your pieces out. You don't have to develop your pieces exactly this way, absolutely not. But for the most part, this is the way to do it. The knights usually want to go to the uh, f3, f6, c3, c6 squares. Usually, not always, but most of the time. Again, my friend Sophia Rode calls them the comfy chairs for the knight. They're the nicest place for the for the those pieces to go to most of the time.